Now we're continuing in this Hasidic discourse, which was given by the Lubavitcher Rebbe in the year 1979, Tavshin Lama Tet. And he's talking about the connection between the <clears throat> going out of Egypt of the Jewish people, the basis of Judaism, the beginning, the birth of Judaism, and all the Jews left <clears throat> with tremendous miracles out of Egypt. At least that's what it says in the Torah. That's what Jews have been believing for the last 3,334 years. And it's the first of the Ten Commandments. I am God that took you out of Egypt. The basis of all the Ten Commandments, the basis of all Judaism, that God took us out of Egypt. Well, as, as miraculous and as unbelievable as that is, <clears throat> and as fantastic, is how much more so will be the future redemption. That's right, there's going to be a future redemption after all this, <clears throat> what's called exile and confusion and and lack of, of freedom of the Jewish people to serve the creator of the universe, uh, there'll be, the, 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 there'll be a, a future redemption when everybody will be free. But here, the, the second redemption is going to be greater miracles. And part and parcel of those greater miracles will be that the Jewish people themselves will change. Because the problem now is not so much external as it is internal. When the Jews left Egypt, so their big problem was external. They were physical, actual slaves. They didn't have time. They didn't have. Uh, they didn't have time to serve God. They were always in danger. Their their they were slaves. They were simply slaves all the time, and at any moment they could be just decimated. Right? No. Around them, there was no, <clears throat> the danger was lurking in every corner. And now in the time where we are, uh, when we are in exile, is our big problem is not so much external problems. Even though up to now, it's true there's been uh, Holocausts and, 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 and expulsions and pogroms and terrible things, but it's not, nothing like it was in Egypt. In Egypt, nobody was free. They were all slaves, at least now. There's like a, when the Holocaust, people could run away to Australia or some other place. In Egypt, there was no thought of running away, and a slave never escaped from Egypt. There was no such thing. <clears throat> and they had to work all the time, and they got out. Now, our problem is, is that we are servants of God and we don't want to work and we're free and we don't want to work. We, won't, we, don't, we don't want to start working. And those people who do serve God, so we our hearts are stuffed up and our minds are stuffed up. We can't serve God properly. And maybe we can do what God says and try to think about God. So the future redemption is going to be somehow or other that everybody's hearts, is, that the, the hearts of the Jewish people are going to open up. And people will start to really realize that God is creating us. And that God is, he's the creator. He's creating everything. God is actually creating everything. He's creating the heavens. He's creating all the stars and the sky. And he's creating all the angels. He's creating all these spiritual love. He's creating the world to come. He's creating all things and he's doing it for us, this world, he wants this world to be perfect. That's what's going to be the future redemption. This world will be a perfect world, even better than it was when God created it and put man in it. <clears throat> and we, we don't really know what it means, what the good is. We, we, we have an idea what it means to run away from bad. Like the Jews were in Egypt, so they, they had an idea that in Egypt it was bad. This they had an idea that it was bad. They were working and they cried out to God. It says they cried out to God. But they didn't really know what good was. And that's that's our problem also. We don't know what good is. We don't know what good is. So the Rebbe said that's what we have two <clears throat> types of going out of Egypt. One type of going out of Egypt is basically leaving the bad. Getting rid of anything that prevents us and deters us and discourages us from being and acting, and thinking, and speaking like a Jew. 
or non-Jews, like a human being. <clears throat> That's called, that power was given to us by going out of Egypt. Going out of Egypt, to go out from bad. But there's another thing, there's another type of freedom, and that is not just going out from bad, to go too good. And that's implied in this blessing that the prophet Micha said, that's what we're, this, this, like the days of your going out of Egypt, I will send, show you miracles. And of course, there weren't days when we left Egypt, there was just one day we left Egypt. So this is giving a blessing for every day that we can go closer and closer to good. Increase in good. So that's what he says. It comes out that the sentence which says, in order to remember the day, <clears throat> it's a commandment to remember the day that we left Egypt. This we can learn that we have to mention and remember going out of Egypt back then. That it says singular. This is mainly the main thing is, is to go out of the bad things that the Luma said, to go out of, away from bad, <clears throat> get rid of bad character traits, get rid of laziness, get rid of, out of things that prevent us. <clears throat> but be, that we, we, we realize that we're servants of God. That has given the power that we can get out of bad things. <clears throat> And the sentence that says, like the days of your going out, the sentence of Micha that says the days of going out of you, this is days, this is in order to talk about going from one good to a better one. This will be in order to get to this, because why, why, why do we even have to do this? Because we don't know who we are, we don't know what we are, we don't know what real good is. Not only that, the essence of man is to work. Man wants to feel useful. Man wants, that, that's, that, that's why man is here. Man wants to feel useful, that he's doing something, accomplishing something. He's living <clears throat> for something. That's people like. One, one of the big, one of the worst times in, in any society is when there's no work. Right? That was one of the ways that Hitler got his into power the communists got into power. There was no work. People had no, nothing to do. They had no work. In addition to the fact that there wasn't food, <clears throat> right? There, there, there was basic food. <coughs> people had whatever, standing in, in soup lines or whatever. But the big, big, big problem was that people didn't feel useful. They had no reason to wake up in the morning. Man was born to work. Man was born to work. When a person works and he's doing something, it, that he feels is meaningful, there's nothing better than that. That's the person's ideal life. <clears throat> when he's doing, it has to be something meaningful. So here we're talking about serving, working for the creator of the universe. That's pretty meaningful. So says the Rebbe, that's <clears throat> the idea of every day going out of Egypt, going higher and higher and higher, doing more good, realizing more and more and more responsibility. When Mashiach comes, there's going to be tremendous, everyone will really feel responsibility to the world. It's not Mashiach is going to come and everybody's just going to start floating, they'll all be zombies. Exactly the opposite. <clears throat> Mashiach is going to activate everybody. But in order to receive this tremendous revelation of meaning and responsibility and to feel that God is creating us and God expects a lot from us and that there's nothing better or more fulfilling than, than repaying the creator for what we owe him having a sense of gratitude to the creator of the universe that's what's wrong with idolatry and these other things is that people don't feel gratitude to the creator they feel gratitude to some person or or some statue or whatever the power <clears throat> therefore we have to go out of egypt and every, every day that's going higher and higher this is the 
Now, what are we supposed to do? It says the Rebbe, there's going to be a new revelation of meaning, of, of, of health, of consciousness, of awareness, of value of this world. There's going to be a new revelation in this world. But in order to bring this new revelation, we have to do new work. Because, and here's the whole principle, this idea of why man was made to work, what does it mean to work, is because everything, all the good, all the revelations of God depend on our work. They depend on our service of God. That was sort of the problem why the Jewish people worshipped the golden calf. They left Egypt. God took them out. God gave them the Torah. God gave them bread from heaven. God did everything. They didn't do anything. As soon as Moses was gone, to remind them, Moses reminded them constantly of the responsibility. What they had to do, as soon as it left, they didn't, people didn't know what to do. They all got confused. They'd been receiving like little babies. It's like taking a pampered child, a pampered child, the day of his bar mitzvah, giving him like $20,000 and putting him on a street where there's only all, you know, drugs and prostitution and, and crime and criminal crime. And then what, what do you expect them to do? What do, expect, what do you expect the child to do, right? He doesn't know any better. He's just been given and receiving and receiving. He wants to continue receiving. The Jewish people got out of Egypt. And as soon as Moses wasn't there to remind them that their job was not to receive, but to give, <clears throat> they said, hey, we, what, what are we receiving now? We got, we got out of Egypt. We got the Torah. We see, we said, let's make a golden calf. Well, Bezman Agullus in the time of exile, especially in this generation, says the Rebbe, I'm just going over what we did last time. So because you have to go out of limitations all the time, and we're going higher and higher, so it must be that this generation that we're in now is the highest of all. We're going out of the highest and highest of limitations. Says the Rebbe, now the limitations we're going out of, right, they're fine, they're refined, etc., but on the other hand, that sometimes they're the most difficult. Multiple. And the Rebbe is going to say what the most difficult test that we're in the tests. That's the whole time of exile. Exile means that there's tests, right? And the, the darkness, like the before the dawn, the darkness is getting darker and darker. We're, give, we're being given more and more difficult jobs to do. True, everything is higher, everything is good. But on the other hand, the, the, the opposition to our service of God, it's like it's like a rat in a corner, like they call it. Now is the real opposition coming up. Where is the opposition from inside of us? We'll see. We'll see in a second. Because we've been refining more and more sparks of holiness through this whole 2,000 years of exile, and even more, not just the 2,000, through the 1,000, whatever is 3,000 to 1,400 years before that, since the time of since the time the Jews got out of Egypt, that was 3,300 years ago. So the second temple was just destroyed a little bit less than 2,000 years ago. So we have 1,300 years before the temple was destroyed. It was, we were also going out of Egypt. And since the temple was destroyed, we're also going out of Egypt. So if so, every day we're going higher and higher. You think things were getting better and better. And the fact is, spiritually they are. But now we're being given the last... <clears throat> most difficult darkness to reveal. That's what's called exile. So it says, by means of the service of going out of exile, the last days before the Mashiach comes, that this going out of Egypt, now, on our days, now, this is the highest of going out. It's almost the same thing, let's say a person a, a, a surgeon, brain surgeon. So he's working on the highest part <clears throat> of the body. The highest aspect of man is the brain. Makes one little tiny mistake, right? But, but there up in the brain, a little tiny tumor, a little something, a little tiny hole or something like that, that can kill a person, mess the whole person up in an instant. So he has to be very careful. So he says, now we're dealing with the problems in the brain. Right, the problems in the brain, the problems in the in the, the the valves of the heart, whatever it is. The most sensitive <clears throat> and life-threatening darkness, that's what we're dealing with. Now, if now is the time when we our service 
is what will really bring us to the Geula Tida, the future redemption. Sha'az then will be the going out of all limitations. Then God will react in a in a big way. Okay, a person could say, come on, this is a little bit far-fetched. You know, what, what are you trying to tell us? Whistle while you work. I mean, the fact is things are getting worse and worse. They're getting worse and worse. What are you, what are you trying to tell us? You know, no, now we should really do the Torah and the commandments because now things are getting worse. We've been saying this for the last 2,000 years. Any second now, Mashiach is going to come and it's going to be great. Just a little more work, you know, just a little more happy. No, they've been schlepping it out. Here the Rebbe says, what do you mean for the last 2,000 years? We've been saying this for the last 3,300 years. And to keep up a positive attitude <clears throat> in such a situation is very difficult, especially now it's in a way the darkest. Why is the darkest? Because we... We've been saying Mashiach is going to be coming for the last 3,000 years, and it hasn't happened. As this, if so, the, 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 the darkness and the disappointment and frustration, it conglomerates. It, it, it gets together, right? We have 3,000 years of, of, of waiting, of frustration, of disappointment. And not only 3,000, says the Rebbe, no, no, it's not 3,000. What are you talking about? It's 3,300. Oh, wow, that's terrible. It's not just 3,300. You have to multiply that by 365 every day of the week. Every day of the year, I'm sorry. So if so, we have one, we did we did the calculation last time. It's something like 1 million 200, whatever, thousand days of frustration and darkness. That's tremendous darkness. It's getting darker and darker. By keeping a positive attitude now, Yiskuba Karamamash will get close to the future redemption. And then we will go out of all limitations and our bullets. Okay, you can say, you know, it's like the, the, they used to have the our game comedies. I don't know if you ever saw this before. In America, they used to have these, <clears throat> um, uh, it, it was, it was uh, skits that they had. They were very clever. They had a, a whole group of young kids. And there was the, it was very popular for a long time. <clears throat> I think they even they started in the, in, the, in the silent movies. But one of the main features was, is all these kids would get together. It was also very nice because they had all sorts of different kids that were there and they were all friends with each other and they all made fun of each other and they all did different things. And some of them were black, and some of them were what, what, white, some of them were fat, some of them were skin, the old, older, younger. It was like, there was no, they were just kids. It was very, it was very uh, positive. In any case, I don't want to get into that. What I do want to get into is they had a means of transportation. <laughs> what was their means of transportation? They all sat in this wagon. And of course, there were like 10 kids or something. I don't know what they were. And, um, <clears throat> and they all sat in this wagon. And they had a, one goat that was pulling the wagon. <laughs> one goat was what? What was the incentive to this goat? They had a long stick. And on the other end of the stick was a string. And at the end of the string was a carrot. And the driver would hold the stick with the carrot out in front of the goat, and the goat would try to get the carrot. And so it would just go walking along. So it was humorous on one end, and the poor goat, I mean, after I guess after he got some, they would feed him. <clears throat> it was humorous <coughs> in the sense that this goat thought he was getting somewhere. He thought he was getting closer to the, to the uh, carrot. Little did he know that every step that he took, he was pushing the carrot further away from him. Okay, so maybe we could say the same thing about this Mashiach coming. You know, we're just trying to get the Mashiach, going after the Mashiach. We're pulling this tremendous burden of all of our troubles and all the past and everything like that. And the more we go, the first few further we're pushing it away. Uh, could be. So we have a lot of reasons to deny or to just, for, just be frustrated and just abandon this whole crazy idea of Mashiach coming and going to save the world. We have, there's only one thing that keeps us going, and that is, it's the truth. <laughs> it's the truth. It really is true. And it really is not a stick at the end of a, a carrot at the end of the stick. It's not. That, it's the truth. I, that's against all logic. But inside of every Jew, there's this feeling, the certainty that God is good. And that somehow or other, this whole business is going to be somehow or other going to be revealed that it's really good. How? It's it's almost 
you know, I don't want to say blasphemous to say the Holocaust was good. The, 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 the expulsion from Spain from this was good. The pogroms were good. You know what happened to this is who could, I'll get you open your mouth to say something like that. So, but somehow or other, God is going to reveal that really, it was really good. And one way we can say it is, is because that the, the good that's going to be revealed in the days of the Mashiach, it'll make it worthwhile. It'll make it worthwhile. We'll say, ah, this was worthwhile suffering for. And the dead will rise. And when the dead will rise, they'll say also, it was worthwhile. The suffering was worthwhile. For this, I'm so happy. I didn't realize it was going to be this good. But the fact is that down deep, every Jew knows it. Obira in it. So therefore, but it requires us to work. Obira in it. Shagili de Gula Tida. This revelation that's going to be in the future redemption will be mine's means of avoda service bizman shibasim zmanagalos. This going out of Egypt totally, what's going to be this good that's going to be revealed here in this world, it all depends on our service and especially this service at the end of exile. How can this be? Let's explain a little bit, because that's the purpose of Hasidut, to try to make it as understandable as possible, because it's not just that it helps us to work, it's a commandment to understand. Shema Yisrael, that's the slogan of Judaism. Shema Yisrael, Shema means understand. Understand, Jews, that God is our God, God is one. God is good, infinitely good, and God is one. What does he mean he's one? That everything that happens is for the good. Every little detail of life, that's Jewish faith. And our thoughts also make it a little bit better, make it a little more acceptable. A little. Just the idea that somehow or other, like the Holocaust or something or other, that somehow or other is going to make sense, even though that idea doesn't make sense, but just the idea that somehow or other we don't really have the whole picture, that also comforts us a little bit, comforts us. You have to be patient. How is it that through our work is going to bring this amazing good that we don't know what it is? We know what it means to go out from bad, but we don't know what good is. How, how are we going to... No, let's understand a beer in the future redemption. There'll be going out of all limitations whatsoever. All boundaries. Even for the boundaries and the limitations, the highest of high. It says Mashiach is even going to be greater than Moses. And I can't get any higher than Moses, right? This is wrong. That's not right. Even Moses, it says, <coughs> it says the Mashiach is going to come in the Zohar. They bring it all the time in Hasidus. And he's going to make that tzaddikim do tshuva. Atya tzaddikaya betiuvta, it says. It's like this. Like it explains in the Maimur. The call of Olamot, all the worlds, even the highest worlds, are called Mitzrayim, Egypt. Liotam bechinet meitzar v'helam, because the world, not just the country of Egypt, is called Egypt, but the whole world is called Egypt. Even the heavenly worlds are called Egypt. Why? Because they're limited. They conceal God. It says when the Jews went across Yam Suf on the seventh day of Passover, right, seven days after they got out of Egypt, so they went there. It says that all the water in the world split. It says, it doesn't say that the river split, it says the water split. Amayim. Amayim. That the waters split. So it explains all the water in the world. Heaven is also water. Shemayim. Shemayim is heaven. All the heavens split open, right? And what did they saw? They saw the creator, they saw God. It says that the, 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 the most simple maidservant saw visions that even Isaiah didn't see. The essence of God, they all saw. In other words, the upper worlds are also concealing God. They're, they're, there's creation. They're concealing the creator. All of the worlds, even the highest, are called Mitzar, Mitzrayim, concealment. Hainu, that what the worlds are called Mitzrayim is because of two reasons. Oh, we did this last time, right? Why? Because they are limited 
Mitzrayim from Meitzur Gavul, and also because <clears throat> they are created by means of God concealing his light. He do it that is known that the concealment of the first Simpson. We talked about this yesterday. God, in order to create the world, he so to speak contracted his light. <clears throat> Not only that the first Simpson that he made, before he started contracting his light, he removed his light. Shehelam or Gami, that he concealed his light totally. Like it says, Mitzrayim, this means concealment. We can say that that would. It considers in the in the mind that the word for world, the God made world. There's three things in the word for world. Right? That's the whole story of the Bible, right? God made a world. In order to make this world, so God had to do two sort of tricks. One of them is, is that he removed his light totally. God did not remove himself, of course. The fact is he didn't remove his light either. He just concealed his light totally. <clears throat> That's called siluk. He concealed his light. And then he made a new type of light. That new type of light is what it says in the Bible that God spoke. And there he made a world. Olam. Olam, the word olam means world, place and time. Olam means concealment, like we just finished saying that God concealed. And olam also means power, elam. Alma means powerful youth and explains that these that the concealment of the world is very, very strong. Helen, very powerful. <clears throat> God is always renewing it. <clears throat> so that's the whole idea of world. When God created a world, he created troubles. He already got himself into, into difficulties. He concealed himself. And not only did he conceal himself, but he made time and place that it seems to be real. He concealed himself and he made it powerful. The world is jumping at us, attacking us from all sides, screaming out, I am reality. There is no God. <clears throat> That's what the world is. Helen, concealment. And it's a powerful concealment. This is where we got up to last time. Umamshik well, Bamaimer and it continues in this Mimer that the previous Rebbe said, where is it? Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Actually, I didn't have to do that. Oh, I see. Okay. It continues in the Mimer that these Havasa Olamos, that the creation of the worlds. It comes from what's called the light of the Kav. Kav. In the Torah, it, this, is, this is what we're talking about, God's speech. In Kabbalah, it's called the light of the beam. Of the beam. The language of Kabbalah is that God made a first simtsum. He, so to speak, concealed totally over his light. So that it, there was, so to speak, no reality whatsoever because he concealed it. And then in this reality, God shot a new articulated type of reality called God's speech or in the language of Kabbalah, the light of the beam, kav. Kav means like a, the, the beam, the pillar, the line. And the mea or shall if had symptom that from the light that was there before God concealed the light, it was impossible to create a world as it is now. Why? Because God wanted a world where he would be concealed. The worlds <clears throat> that God created are up and down. That's what a world is. It means a place where <clears throat> there's physical or spiritual is above and below. Spiritual is above, physical is below. But from the light that was before God concealed this first light, before he started to speak, so to speak, <laughs> this light, which is before this first concealment, it didn't have an up or a down. There was no spiritual and physical. It was just pure oneness of God. And also the general light, which is there before this first 
concealment that God made called the tzimtzum, the first contraction, the total contraction, the light was there. This was light which was in God's essence. <clears throat> so to speak, there was no time, there was no place, there was no being, there was nothing other than pure oneness of God. But on the other hand, God also didn't get any pleasure. When we do good commandments, God gets pleasure. There was no one, to, God wasn't a king, so to speak. He couldn't rule over anyone. Even though it says, Adon Olam, Asher Malach, Peterim called, that was only God's potential. And this light, so, I mean, this makes no sense what we're talking about. But if we're saying that God creates the world, which we do believe, so there must be some sort of a system involved in this, in the creation of the world. <clears throat> and this system that God created the world is <clears throat> miracles, but they're ordered miracles. This is, we're talking about godliness in himself. So in order for God to create the spiritual worlds, which that's called up, and from there comes the, the physical worlds, which is called down. So in order for him to do this, he had to hide his, so to speak, his oneness, because God's oneness, there is no up and down. There's no spiritual, physical. Like we said so many times before, God doesn't really exist as we know any sort of existence. God creates all existence. God creates spiritual, he creates physical. That's not comprehensible to us. Even the spiritual is not comprehensible to us. In any case, this light that was there before God concealed it, he made what's called the first symptom. This was the God of this is the light of God's essence, the light which is included in the illuminator. It's totally one until there is no possibility of light at all, spirit, anything. So God's light, as it is in itself, it can't make a world. And God wanted there to be a world. He wants there to be a world with his people. In order, as God was, so to speak, in himself, before he made this first, what's called symptom concealment, <clears throat> in order to be a source for something, it's necessary, in order to be a source of the world, the source of the world has to be something, right? God spoke in order for God to speak. Like it says in the Bible, there has to be a source of speech. I mean, why do they use the more metaphor of speech? Speech comes out from something. So there must be a thing. And that's what's called the light of this beam. Or that by means of God, so to speak, contracting, concealing his true essence, then there can be what's called a kav. That means new light. There, from this new light, this is articulated light. This is called the beam. From this, there can be up and down. There can be a world. And by means of this, there can be worlds. The spiritual worlds, lower spiritual worlds, lower spiritual worlds, until there can finally be this physical world. <clears throat> These are all creations. The Islam, where we can say, time itself is a creation. Space is a creation. But on the other hand, we have to remember that it's God that's creating it. So it's not that the world is nothing. It's not that the world, the world is tremendously important. So to speak, the world has to be here. It has to be here because God is creating it, right? He's creating it every moment. It's God that's creating it. So on one hand, the world doesn't exist at all. It's just a big bluff. And it's a very powerful bluff and it conceals over God, which there can't be a bigger lie than that. But on the other hand, God himself is making this. So it must be that, that it has a tremendously deep significance and importance, this darkness. That, all this darkness comes from God's what's called creative force. That's called the kav, this beam. It's something like we said before in the world. Mylan mata, that the world, what we has, <clears throat> is up and down, spiritual and physical. That's something like what we said about the limitations of the world, space and time. And that, that the kav is existing similar, a, a separate existence of life. God's word seems to be something separate from him. This is like the fact that the world conceals. Not just the world exists, it's up and down, but that one of the purposes of this up and down, spiritual and physical, is to conceal God. 
That's what's wrong with all the other religions in the world. They all have a goal, the spiritual. And the spiritual is just a creation. It conceals God. We're interested that the whole world should realize the creator. And the spiritual is just part of the creation. Now, according to what we said, that all the worlds are called Mitzrayim, that all the worlds, even the highest spiritual worlds, they're all called Egypt, because that they are because they are concealing God with these two things we said before. There's time, there's space, there's sim- they seem to be something separate from God. We can also say that also the Kav, that this creative power of God called this beam of godliness, this is also part of Mitzrayim, of Egypt. So what's the Rebbe trying to say over here? The future redemption, we're going to go out of this also. The future redemption is not just going to be revealed in heaven on earth. The future redemption is going to be revealed in the creator of heaven, and specifically on the earth. And meet it in the true thing of going out of Egypt is, going out of all limitations, is by revealing the essence of God, which was before this concealment, to reveal that in this physical world. If you reveal the spiritual and the physical, then that sort of, <clears throat> the, the, the spiritual, how do you say, it, 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 it overrides the physical. People see spiritual, who, knows, who needs the physical? But when you see the essence of God, the essence of God is the creator. Why he's creating the physical, why he's creating the spiritual. And it'll be revealed that the spiritual is being created for the physical, like the soul is being created for the body. Right? Does that make any sense? The soul is being created for the body? Yes, we'll see how precious the body is. That's the idea of the raising of the dead. And that's what we're saying. The Rebbe Lubavitcher Rebbe never died. It says that Rebbe Yehuda Nasi, he died and he came back every Shabbat. He used to make Kiddush for his family. How could it be? We say, David Melech Yisrael What do you mean they're living forever? They're not living forever. Right? We know the place where these people are buried. What do you mean? <clears throat> says, no, that's just what it seems to be. But the fact of the matter is, is that the body is more infinite than even the soul is. How can that be revealed? From God's essence. When God's essence is revealed, we'll re- then it'll see that the physical and the spiritual are only creations. And the main thing is the physical. That's where the, all these tests are, and all these difficulties are. <clears throat> That's where free will is. We can choose to do bad if we want. And unfortunately, a lot of people take that option very seriously. And this is Sheba Geula, then in the future redemption, will be Shlemo Seyatziyah Mitzrayim. Then we're really going to go out of all Egypt. We're going to go out of not just the problems of this world. We're going to go out of the limitations of good. The spiritual worlds are good. Why do we have to go out of that? Because there's better and better and better. The levels of good are infinite. And that's what we got from this prophet Micha when he says, like, the days of going out of Egypt. He was hinting at not just going out of bad, which is what we did the first time when we left Egypt and we have the power to do now, but also to go higher levels of good. Like it says, the Mashiach is going to make the tzaddikim do tshuva. Hayatziah going out from all limitations, all limitations of even good. This we don't know what this is. I mean, like I said before, we know what it means to go out of bad, but what does it mean to go to higher levels of good? It's very, very. That's a difficult thing to do. We don't know what it means. Ki'az then yegilo or will be the revelation of light, which was before the simsum, because then they'll be revealed the light. In other words, God's essence, which was before the whole creation began, and this will be light, a type of light of God, believable unlimited, which is above any type of light which is revealed to the worlds. So we have to, when we're talking about this ideal of light, we're talking about reality. And in this world, we're like in a coma. We don't know what reality really is. We don't know what it really means, what reality is. <clears throat> and in the future, we'll start to realize what reality is. It says that when a person dies, he, he go, the, the soul goes to heaven, the soul never dies. So the soul goes to heaven, and it's called the soul goes to the world of truth. Olam ha-emet. Olam ha-emet. The world of why? 
Because when a person, after a person dies, his soul goes to heaven, he sees how foolish this world was, how, how deceiving this world was. He sees how deceiving this world, because he sees the spiritual world. The spiritual worlds are infinitely good. He sees how deceptive that this world is. He sees how good the spiritual is. Well, in the future redemption, we're going to see how good this physical world, how deceptive the upper worlds are. How deceptive heaven was. We thought that was the main thing. That was that, that was reality. It wasn't reality. But that's called going out of good. Higher levels of good. Going to heaven is good. Right? There's no sins up there. There's no evil. <clears throat> that's why there's such a thing as hell. Because the, the bad can't exist there. The other person has to be purified from his bad in order to get these revelations of This is That's the whole idea of the future redemption. The future redemption is going to be new levels of good that are going to be revealed. <clears throat> to the level it'll be the, that will reveal the creator himself, the source of all good, will be revealed. Is it going to happen? It, for sure it's going to happen, right? Do we know what it means? A little bit more now than before. <clears throat> but this depends on our work. What type of work do we going to have to do? You're going to be surprised. Tune in tomorrow. And we'll find out what exactly we have to do now in our generation, the last generation, the darkest, the most difficult tests of all in our generation in order to open up the doors to the future redemption. God willing, be with us tomorrow, and we'll discuss it. Now we're going to learn the Sikha of the Rebbe. Let's go.